Hello and welcome to TechBytes.io. In this episode, we're going to provide a responsive web framework for a Rails 5 application using a Bootstrap 3 gem. First, let's look at what a responsive web framework is. A responsive web framework provides an application with an adjustable view. It responds to the size of the viewport. So, if you're viewing the application on a phone, a tablet, or a desktop, or maybe even a TV, it will properly adjust to the size of the screen, maximizing the landscape available to it. So you, the developer, are in control and can set the app to show only what you want to show, depending on the screen real estate that's available to the user. So let's go ahead and get started and see how we can do this in a Rails 5 application. So to do this, we are going to use a simple Rails 5 blog. So a simple Rails 5 application that threw together and uh, you can find the information for it. If you don't know how to create one, you can find it back on the TechBytes IO website and I will provide a link to that down below. Uh, on top of that, uh, you can certainly clone this from the GitHub repo if you don't have a Rails 5 application that you want to use or you don't want to take the time to go ahead and get one started. So you can find this at uh, github.com techbytes.io ruby blog. Feel free to go to it and uh, clone this, clone this uh, application. So we will simply copy that to our clipboard and we'll get into our command line. And let's go ahead and bring down this application. All right, so now that the application is down, let's find it, ls, and there it is, Ruby blog. Let's see it right here. We'll cd into the Ruby blog and see what we have here. Oops, perhaps if we, wow, well, getting a little fast on the fingers there. All right, so now we have our, we can see the files. So now that the application is on our uh, on our local Git repo, we will, uh, of course, bundle our application. Now that since the application has now been bundled and we pulled down all the dependencies, let's set up our database for it. So we'll rake db migrate and bring up the, uh, let's let me scroll up so that we can see this better. So as you can see, I just typed in the rake db migrate command and we'll uh, set up the database. This one is set up with just a simple SQL light uh, database that was of course comes pre-packaged with the rails 5 framework and once it puts that together you can see uh this like i said it's a very simple blog we have just the posts table in there and so let's take a look at this application we'll go to rails s uh bring up the Rails server and then we will head over to localhost 3000 See localhost 3000 to check out what this application looks like. This is what the application currently looks like. As you can see, it's not very appealing and it's not responsive. It is the simple Rails framework that uh, you can see I put the uh, root file as the posts index. And if we click new post, you can see that it will go to the standard Rails um, form, um, which is not responsive, although you can drag out the body, but uh, it is kind of ugly sitting off to the left side of the screen here. And this is something that we are going to clean up and we're going to make it one more modern, uh, make it a little bit more appealing and of course make it responsive. So to do that, we're going to dive into the gem file of our application. So let's go ahead and bring back up our command line and we will cancel out this, we'll end the server, control C, and go back to our, the root of our application. So with that, I'm going to open up the, open up your code editor or your, te your text editor. 
So let's open up the gem file. We can see here's the gem file. Here's all the dependencies for this application. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in a bootstrap gem here called bootstrap JT. So we can put it right here and I'll show you where to find it. So let's go back to our browser and head over to Ruby gems and at rubygems.org you can go to gems bootstrap JT you can certainly just search for bootstrap JT and you'll can find the gem right here so we will go to the gem file we will copy this to our clipboard we'll head back over to our gem file and we will just let's go bring it up so you can see it and we'll just put it right there and I'm going to add a little comment to it which says uh, responsive bootstrap three gem for applic for application. All right, so then we will hit Control Save. We'll save this, and then we'll open up our command line again, and we will bundle our application. So now. You can see that the Bootstrap JT gem has been added to our application. There it is right here. And now we will, to find out the other dependencies or what we must do to get this application going, you go back to the Bootstrap JT gem. Let's go to home page here. And you can see we're now at the Bootstrap JT uh, GitHub code, re code repo. And it tells you what we need to do. We just did this. We added our gem. We bundled it. And now the easiest way to do it is I would say we're going to start with the application JS file inside of our JavaScript folder. And we can just copy this here. Go back into our text editor. Go up to app. Let's open up our assets. That was the job application JS file. And you can see it's all right here. And we'll just replace that. So here's the information that was needed. You can we will take out these lines here where it was saying where to enter the information. Let's take this one out as well. And now we're going to do the same thing with the app, and we'll save this, of course. And we are going to add in the same thing for our style sheets, our application CSS file. So go back over to the repo, pull out this code here, which just tells you the additional lines that were needed to enter. Go to your application CSS file and add that info here. And then we will clean it up a little bit. Oops. And we're going to take, I'm going to take these lines out as well. So let's take out this comment. And then I will just clean this up. Oops. All right. And then you want to save this as well. So now we have entered in all of our the Bootstrap JT requirements to get this gem to work inside of our application. Now that the dependencies for the Bootstrap JT gem are in place, let's actually let's go ahead and edit our uh, posts form. So we'll go down to views. We will go to posts. And let's open up the form. So here you can see it's the right now it is the boilerplate um, form for the application. Now, if we were to run the Rails server and bring this back up, nothing has changed when you come except the uh, font for the application based on putting entering in the, the Bootstrap JT gem. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to change our fields here. We're going to change the way that they are input. So to do this, I'm just going to delete this here. You can see it has the title, body, tags, and uh, the submit button. I'm going to delete those and I'm going to add in this text instead. So this code will cover that. 
I'm going to put it in over here. Let's see, control A. Oops, what's going on here? There we go. Now you can see it looks a little bit different, which is good. That's what we're looking for. Except there's something wrong because we have this. Ah, got it. Okay, so let's add that. There we go. Now we're good to go. So now our form is uh, has the information that we want, and it is correct, and we have our quotation back where it needs to, where it belongs. But as you can see, we've aligned our code here to be in, or uh, we've aligned our code with the bootstrap uh, requirements. And I'll have an, a, uh, I'll have the bootstrapped documentation linked below, and you can access it that way. It's very good documentation and walks you through anything that you would like to do with your application. But since we're just getting started here and we're making adjustments to the form, just want to show that, so we've changed our class over here to form group. We've added the class of form control within each of these. And then you can see we changed the, uh, actually the button as well uh, to, this one has a class of actions, but also I've changed the text of the button to say add the story and we put in a class of button button info and the button info is the that, that is the color of the app of the button uh, in bootstrap colors so we will save this and with uh, you know control s and let's take a look at what it looks like inside of our browser so here this is what it used to look like. This is what the the document with the uh, generic boilerplate form for a Rails application looks like. If you remember, that's what we pulled up at the beginning. We're going to go ahead and start our server again. So you can see I started the server Rails S and got our server up and running. And all I'm going to do now is refresh. So here's our new Bootstrap application. You can see that the Te uh, the fields take up the entire screen. Uh, like I said, the font has changed. There's our add this story. And instead of it having the you know, title, then the input field, we've added in the placeholders inside each of these in order to, uh, we've added in the title, uh, the placeholders inside each of these input fields. So to show that it's responsive, let's go ahead and open up the developer mode again go to responsive design view and you can see that it has changed it is adjusted down on the tablet side and if we take it down to a phone you can see that the uh, input fields have adjusted appropriately for each one of these now you may think that this reaching across the entire screen is uh, a little bit crazy, especially for maybe if you're looking at a laptop or a desktop, and I do agree with that. And uh, you know that comes down to the design choices, but I just wanted you to see that it does responsive and it makes some adjustments. So just if you wanted to clean that up a little bit, you can go to layouts, hop into your application layout, get inside the body there, and to do this, we're going to add a let's see a div with the class equals, we're gonna add in a container here. And let's make sure we close out this div tag. All right, and let's clean it up a little bit. I'll move in the yield, hit control save. And let's go back to our browser and we can just refresh. And you can see there, it's a little bit better. It's, uh, we put in the container, it is restrained to the container inside in the center of the page here. Now you can add in columns and shrink the size of this. You can place it wherever you want on the screen. Of course, this is all dependent upon you and uh, the design of your application, what you want it to look like, how you want to do it. And like I said, if you go to the Bootstrap documentation, it is great and can help you walk through there and figure this out. Uh, the bootstrap works off of a grid, so you can place it if you wanted to have it all over here, over here, over here, it's your call. But uh, let's see, now that we put it in the container, let's go ahead and take another look at it. You can see there it is with the desktop view. We'll move it down to a tablet view. Uh, we'll move it down to a phone view. So we can see that the adjustments are taking place. 
and we have a the padding on each side of here. Uh, we can eat up a little bit there, but uh, it adjusts to the size of the screen. So uh, that was implementing our Bootstrap JT application inside of our Rails 5 application, our Bootstrap JT framework, sorry, inside of our Rails 5 application. Um, if you want the text, a text version of this, it is available on the TechBytes.io site as a posting, a blog post, and you can find it under the Creating a Responsive Web Form and a Rails 5 application with Bootstrap. I'll show you that real quick. Uh, so if we go to here, here it is right here. This is Creating a Responsive Web Form and a Rails 5 application with Bootstrap. And if you scroll through, you can see that we have the images and we have the documentation here. So you can certainly find it here.